All right, welcome to episode, I believe, eight of the Demonic Discussions podcast. I am Cameron Pierce. Uh, today we have a returning host for this episode. We have Macy Monahan back. Welcome back Hi, to this I'm episode. Back. And there's a specific reason that she's back for this episode, and that's because of our guest. We also have Jake Phillips standing by with us as well. Hello. Um, so, for today's special guest, we have one of our fellow Nether Spawn from Netherworld Haunted House. He is the king of the second show of Netherworld. He is also the head leader of the cybernetics division of the box facility. He is the one and only <laughs> sick, sadistic, and twisted Dr. Sada, Mr. <laughs> Dylan Gregory. Dylan, how's it going? Good, good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I you love forgot, it. I'm loving the intro. You forgot to mention Dr. Gregory. Oh, yes. yes him too. Yeah, <laughs> he's definitely part of the sadistic category. AKA, AKA the biggest makeup of the second show, I believe, last year. Yes, he was the big. I had to get in line with, the, with like the Gorgon, okay? Yeah. Like, it was me next to the Gorgon. <laughs> like, I'm just standing next to this big snake lady, like, hey, or not snake lady, technically tentacle, t- like tentacles, because she didn't have snakes, but yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, hi, this is, this is great. I mean, we both went at the same time, and yet our makeups took, like, the same exact amount of time, and it was crazy. I mean, you never really think that I'm going to stand next to this generous monster, and yet, you know, she was the main one of Night of the Gorgon, and I was the main one of Cold Blooded. Freaking weeaboos here, tentacles, and they just automatically want to tune into the episode. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can hear them coming in now. Yeah, oh, someone didn't think that through. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, well. So, all right. So, we're going to go on and get into uh, asking questions. Um, I'll go on and start this stuff off, and then we will. Once we get done with the questions section, we will actually go into a couple topics that our guest Dylan here has actually recommended that we talk about. So, Dylan, give us a little overview as to how you got into the haunt business. What made you want to get into it? How long you've been doing it? What's your characters? Well, I got into the haunt business basically. It was mainly because I moved here to Georgia suddenly from Florida, and it was very sudden. And it was around the time I just moved here in 2017. And me and my brother Holden were just looking around for something to do. And I've always been in love with haunted houses. Oh my God. Like my first haunted house I ever went into was Silent Hill at Holland Horror Nights. That can tell you a lot. I mean, come on, man. So, and I always loved horror movies and I always loved, I've only, I've been a theater kid since I was in high school. So, I mean, come on, give me a break. Theater kids represent. Oh, yes. Theater, theater kids represented. I was a bit, I mean, I was a thespian. I got into the thespian society. So I've been involved. I love special effects and set dressing and lighting and everything like that. So I got into it. And my first night, I was a werewolf. And oh, my God, I think it was like the hottest thing ever I had done ever. But yet I loved it so much. And at the end of the night, I think that fur must have been like eight pounds heavier just because of how much I was running around and I loved it so much and I was like this is awesome because I was I, you know I, I grew up in Florida I always went to Halloween Horror Nights so once I once my first night hit I was like oh I'm hooked I'm hooked and I've heard about Netherworld since forever since I started looking up haunted houses so and once I just got into it I was like this is awesome and then once I started getting into the stories of Netherworld, which Ben Armstrong writes, you know, he writes these such amazing stories and like, how can you not fall in love with them? I mean, it, it's just like more, it's just more to play with when creating characters. Cause you know, I have so many characters. It's like, it's not even, Jake knows some of them. He's uh, some of them I've personally interacted with him. And some of them have actually personally interacted with Macy as well. And a couple of them with Cameron. So, I mean, you've all had your own experiences with my very intriguing characters. Did we tell them about the night that I was on break from Chainsaw? And, oh, yes. Uh... <laughs> Please. That is, that's Cameron. I don't know if you know the story. Do you know the story? I have not heard this story. Macy, do you know the story? 
I also have not heard this story. I'm very intrigued. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jake. And scared. Start rolling. You should be scared. Start rolling. Okay, so <laughs> this is where the mature language warning is going to come in. So um, <clears throat> one night I was on break from Chainsaw. I'm in this hooded costume covered in green boils and everything. I look like nothing would bother me at that point. But of course, I'm walking down the hallway and I see this asshole going ape <laughs> shit <laughs> in the alien lab. <laughs> going I'm just ape. popping out from door to door and I, all you hear is Doing screams. That's that's what drew me to it. All I heard was just blood curdling screams. And, and then I'm just, I'm just like, someone's having fun. And I pop my head in and he's right there. And he's and he's just gro- he's just getting up on people. He's got their hand. He's got his hands all in their faces. Medical instruments of torture, possibly sexual torture. I don't know. Um, and, and, it was not uh, like that. It was oh only the, it, it was the alien intestines from Subject Unknown because I was he, the autopsy doctor. Then why were you whipping people with them? <laughs> because I was making it look like. Oh, oh, well, dear. the reason I was whipping people with the intestines. And I wasn't actually whipping people with it. I was kind of fake throwing it at them. Yeah. But I had a yeah. syringe full of ice cold water that I would just spray on people a little bit and to make it look like it was blood from the alien. And it worked so well when I would make that kind of effect to where it looks like the intestines blood. Mm-hmm. And if you, I, I think scares through, I'm sorry, but that worked like, Oh my God. Like it was the funniest thing ever. Like I had one lady screaming, what the hell did you just put on me? Is that alien juice? <laughs> alien it's juice. juice for, it's yeah, juice no. from the dumpster outside, if that's what you want to know. Literally I mean. said, she literally said oh. alien juice. So, I mean, come on. I mean, Man, uh, man's I mean, out here in the box facility juicing aliens. So, Basically, he turned, he, turned the box facility, he turned the box facility into the kink castle. So I stopped oh, no. and so I stopped and watched him do all this for a couple of minutes, just in just enjoying what the heck I was watching. And then he he saw me and he decided to take a brief second between groups and he came out and um and me but with him he doesn't drop character. So he came out there, I'm off chainsaw, and I'm like, hey, what's up? And then he just goes, Hi. And he just starts creeping me out immediately. He's just all up on me. And I'm spawn. So he just like starts grabbing me on the arm and stuff like that. And I'm just like, Yeah, chill and chill, chill, chill. And then, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if you're spawn, especially at another world, and I know you very well, I'm yeah. gonna mess with you a little bit if I have the chance. Because I mean, when it's all like great fun. This year. Yeah, I'm oh. not gonna lie, Macy. When you came through this year, I laid no mercy on you, and I loved it. Oh, I know. I was laughing the whole time. My friend Ava, yes. who was with us, she fell every single time you popped through the door, and that was like four or five times. Yeah, like, the, you the, this is the funny thing. Down. Is I that <laughs> night because for the viewers listening at home, me and Dylan worked together in the same show this year, Cyborg Shot, the second show, yeah. second yes, show sir. gang, by the way. Um, yes sir but um anyway i was in bottomless pit and he was an alien autopsy spinner for the the customers come through bottomless pit first before they get to him Mm -hmm. they have a good they have a good about a minute and a half before they get to him i believe and i saw macy and ava come through i come in i pop them ava falls down twice she falls down the stairs on the second scare and sure enough I'm like, this is my moment because this is a moment you were right there next to John uh, yeah. having fun at the bio lab curtains. Mm-hmm. And I, you probably remember me mm-hmm. run, like running as fast as I can in that gigantic cyborg armor, like full on crackhead mode. Like you just flip the cyborg switch to crackhead mode. <laughs> and I come running to you. Macy and Ava's here. Ava's in the white mask. Get the crap out of them. And all I remember hearing you say is, bet, and you went running off to the next door. And then all you hear is just Macy scream and laugh. And all you hear is the blood curling scream of her friend. And then I Uh see, I I remember you looking through the curtain and you see me twirling my axe at her. And then you just start dying laughing. I, I I run out and I see you curled over. I didn't stop and look at you, but I just saw you curled over and laughing. I just go running to the curtain so I can so I can get her again. And I just see Macy going, good job, Dylan. Great job. I did. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you and, a lot for that because that fun- was her birthday. I took her there for her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the funniest thing is, I'm already back in my spot in Bottomless Pit after telling him, you know, hey, they're here. And I remember I saw you come running towards me at Bottomless Pit, and I hear you go, I got him five times. Yeah, I, I did. It's like, what? Well, and- because in Cyborg Shock, I mean, <clears throat> Jake, Jake and Macy and Cameron can vouch for this, you know, because of COVID and all like that, you know, obviously, and a lot of hot, hot attractions around the United States, you know, actors had to be cut, which is, you know, the means of COVID. Yeah. Unfortunately, which we're hoping for better years. I mean, let's be honest here. We, 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 that was the craziest haunt year we did, but we did it, honestly. Yeah. I've been haunting for five going on six years, I believe. And this was by far the craziest haunt year I've ever had. Yeah. This is, yeah. Going on this year is going to be my fifth year in the haunt industry. So this is definitely something that is, I never ever experienced. So we all made through it. But, you know, I had the whole half, kind of finale section of side workshop where you really saw like the more gory scenes i'm gonna say yeah. of Cyborg Shock, right cameron because there was a lot of gore yeah in I, area. I would say that uh really the only other area that would be a little bit more gorier than where you were would probably be in the centipede room right before you go into bottomless pits yeah exactly that well that, that's the paleo lab i know exactly what you're talking about um yeah. literally like you know as soon like where i was in the beginning of my area you just see this wall of flesh that has been kind of like just made and obviously you see a giant mechanical saw come out and you know it's it, there was it, there was so much gore that i loved it so much because i'm so i don't know why i love gore so much like it's so bad and i can watch you murder like those <laughs> er shows i can watch those er shows like nothing was a popcorn but <laughs> literally like I don't know. Like, I just loved it so much. And for some reason, Jay can attest to this. The box facility is without a doubt, like a video game that you wish you always had. Yes. Yes. Like, I wish the story of this facility was made into a video game. Like, honest to God, the closest thing I could resemble the box facility being would be SCP Containment Breach meets Dead Space. It's for me. It's Dead Space meets Resident Evil. Yeah, I was See, thinking I, more Resident Evil. I also Evil. Yeah. I, I have to th- I have to throw in SCP Containment Breach just because of all the different anomalies Breaches. that exist through the facility, like the Obelisk, which we will get into that more because we are going to we're going to go in depth on the box facility. So to all the spawn that have never really looked into the story, get ready because here is your episode where we're going to talk about it a little bit more in depth. Yes, uh, we are. We have the king of the second show here. So, well, I, I um, do have to. I do have yeah. to have an honorable mention about that for the, for the kings and queens of Cyborg Shock, or yes. just as a second show, regardless. Garrett Stockdale and Mackenzie yeah. Matthews are absolutely, yeah, without a doubt, like amazing in Cyborg, especially Garrett. Garrett is the one who is mainly is the thought process and of like I believe of some of, of most of or not all of the construction of second show but he is he is the main showrunner yeah exactly show. he's the yeah. main showrunner but he is just like him and mckenzie are like amazing like oh yeah so i had i have to shout, i have to shout them out because we can't we cannot talk about the box and not mention them because i mean come on yeah i would like to add that when we came that when me and ava came through and we had just gotten to the queue line for cyborg shock mckenzie made ava fall again <laughs> Did she pop oh, her with I the taser? Like yes. Good. I'd already saw her. I knew what was about to happen, but Ava didn't. She went like right behind her, popped her with it, and she fell straight to the ground. And you see, the the other thing that we also have to give Garrett and Mackenzie credit for, those two wore full head silicone masks every night. With wires in them. And with a mask over the mouth. Yeah, and with a mask over the mouth. That full on silicone. Like... And for those of y'all that aren't in the haunt business and y'all are wondering, well, what's the difference between silicone masks and what I can find at Spirit? Uh, Silicone masks are no joke. Typically, they're almost about an inch thick. They are very skin tight. They fit to your face to where it will catch any movement your face puts off and it will replicate that into the mask anytime you move your face. 
they're amazing pieces of artwork but good god they're on a whole nother level when you, it takes a different breed to be able to wear those things especially one of my other characters that i'll explain in a minute who is the hag um she had a heavy silicone mask because she had a chest piece and a back piece along with the mask oh so ooh, ooh, ooh. that it, it so was brutal Everyone told me that that was the most brutal mask of Netherworld, but I actually disagree. I actually thought that mask wasn't bad because after a while, your body kind of gets used to the weight on your shoulders. But, you know, I was every, when I first put that thing on, I was like, wow, this is definitely one heavy woman. Like, whoa. Like, <laughs> we got Big Bertha. I almost named her that, honestly. I mean, you know, who, doesn't, who, who doesn't want to name an old lady they're playing to be named Big Bertha? But, <laughs> which Honest means, to God, this... the, the most brutal costume that I believe Netherworld has, and he's not in use anymore. He's in the House of Creeps Monster Museum. If you ever get a chance, people, if y'all have never been to the Netherworld new location, go check it out. They're open year-round for escape games as well as their uh, House of Creeps Monster Museum, um, The Abomination. Yeah. And that costume is a full fiberglass shell armor costume and a foam latex full body suit. That yeah. is, from Oof. what I've heard, that costume is one of the most brutal ones to wear because of how heavy it is and how hot it is. I mean, one can only dream of wearing a full body suit and scaring somebody. But yet, you know, I mean, and since we're on the topic of characters and all that, but I mean, Cameron, I mean, you haven't seen some of my characters before, but Jake has. Jake, you know, like I can, di- I can differ characters from first show to second show. Yeah, and it's kind of, it's kind of crazy what people, because, because I'm right there with you, because I have Brother Jack and Doctor Bones, so exactly, but, but both are very, very different, and um, but yeah, it's it's crazy what you can do with your personality. It's almost, it's almost like you need to go see a doctor, but not one of the doctors that you play, because if you go see them, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm for, I, mean, I, I honestly think one of my haunt specialties character wise is definitely doctors and all that. Cause I think that is just something that I just, I don't know why I do so well, but I just do. Well, you see, and, and I, I think honest to God, what helps you the best with the doctor characters like that, is that you're not like you're not bolt like me and Jake are. You have that more, I guess you would call it smaller body complexion. It fits those creepy doctors to where you can really just if you start just kind of contorting your arms with it a little bit, people are gonna be like, oh no, 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 get away. Get oh, don't away. talk, don't talk about contortion because Jake will start cringing. <laughs> uh yeah because i've seen this man do things with his body that should not be humanly possible <laughs> i mean oh. yeah m- yeah macy honestly like jay do you remember the first year that another one went to the new location do you know when the awakened remember the dentist you have to remember the dentist the fact that there was a dentist is all i need to know <laughs> i i've seen photos of the dentist how his yeah. face literally has the triphobia holes and the teeth and the holes and whatnot yes it does yes it does mm-hmm. and well, you know really macy's cringing at the thought of it. well because well because macy in the, fir- like the first the first year of netherworld being in the new location in the awakened you kind of saw like the main parts of the of like kind of like in the storyline the town of weisberg and mm-hmm. the dentist office was one of those scenes and this dentist okay. office had a full-blown dude in a chair that I could like make look like I was pulling teeth out of, and I had that. You know that. You know that annoying bright dentist light. Oh yeah. I oh, had God. that, and I would use that as a spotlight, and I would be like, you know, who goes there? But I also had a drill, like that dentist drill, that annoying zzz oh, sound. Oh no 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 no! Oh no! no, 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 no I hate no, no. that. And let me just tell you, my antics with that, and also an animatronic coat that would blast out air. I would start kind of like pivoting myself to be the distraction so where they would not know that coat was there and it would scare the living bejesus out of them. I mean, come on. See, yep, there we go. Cameron has it right there. Um, literally like, oh God, like I would get them. And I would, I would, I had a lot of characters 
in the first show for the first couple of years. Cause I mean, I started in the first show when I first started another world, I didn't start in the second show, but I had, I had the dentist, I had a werewolf in the woods. I had uh, an awakened mummy, which was a very fun character to play. I love playing zombies with my. I believe I've seen a photo of you in that costume at the Nether- at the Dragon Con parade with Netherworld. Yes, That's- sir. That that was the, that was the same exact costume, and I I mean me with my body movements and my weird movements that I've studied for like you know weirdness and all that. I mean I mean it's literally a study you can do for for haunting. You want to take a class for haunting? Study weirdness. It helps a lot. Like, let me tell you now. So with zombies, it would just help so much. Plus with like, even the next year, whew, Jake knows I was, I was, I just, I love it so much. Jake knows everything because, because like, you're one of the people that I hang out with at Netherworld the most. So. I mean, and honestly, like Netherworld is such a big, huge family, like, and yeah. That's one thing I really do. Try. I mean, I know that's a lot for like a lot of haunts, you know, that can say that, but Netherworld, like everyone there is so great and everyone there is so respectful. Like even during all this COVID nonsense, which was crazy, you know, even during all this COVID nonsense, when only half of us were there, we did. Not yeah. Care. Half of us still, <laughs> we didn't care. Everyone, everyone did what they had to do to make sure they could haunt. Everyone did what they had to do to make it safe. And we put on one heck of a show while being COVID safe. Indeed, we did. Yes, we sure and did. And 25th anniversary this coming year is going to be even better. Oh God, I just I can't even wait. I can't we I can't say nothing for the viewers, but no, we, we can't say anything. But no, or no, <laughs> definitely not, definitely not. And I wouldn't even want to because I mean, oh my God, you got to come see it for yourself. The only thing I really feel like I I feel like the only thing that you need to say with Netherworld would whenever it's not even with 20th anniversary, it's with every year with the new themes. It's always something different and interesting. You know what I mean, Jake? It, it has been that way for since we started. Yeah. Like it, the themes are so different, but yet you can they're still so <clears throat> I don't know, it's like it has so much meat and potatoes to play with. Oh yeah, from yeah, primal, so that, from, from primal scream and Mr. Grendel to now, we've had a wild ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that that's the thing um, <sighs> to all the viewers listening at home. If y'all have never seen Netherworld in person, if it, it's an experience you need to experience once in your life to go through Netherworld haunted house. Um, literally, <clears throat> there's literally the story of what we are at now started all the way back in what was it 94 when they first started i believe 97 97 not 97 it's 96 i was gonna say i'm pretty sure it's 96 or 7 the story of netherworld starts from that time all the way to now and it's all connected to one central way and that's one of the beautiful things about Netherworld is their storytelling with their sh- with their show topics are just second to none. They're just absolutely beautiful. It's just not even it, 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 even to catch you on that, Cameron. The sets being beautiful. I mean, they are so beautiful. I mean, they're so so beautiful. It's like a visual feast for the eyes. I mean, even I went through this year with. Um, you know, going through as a patron when one of my off days, because I was like, I don't have nothing to do. I want to see the sets for myself because I'm, I'm I was always in second show most of the time this year, or the last year in Cyborg. I was in Halloween Nightmares three times as one of the really cool characters, but you know, I never really saw Halloween Nightmares, so I was like, why not? I mean, go support what I, go support my haunt and go see the show because i never saw it and the first person actually who scared the living bejesus out of me was ben right in the beginning with his chains <laughs> and this bat mask that i didn't even know was him until he started talking and i was like i cannot believe that like i was like <clears throat> if it has to be anybody at least it was him but you know it's just so beautiful the sets are just so like I can't even like Jake. You, it's it, Mackenzie. All you, all, all three. You know, like it's so. It's such a visual eye fest. Like your neck will start hurting if you have, like from looking so much. 
Do you it mean is. do you mean Macy, not Mackenzie? My name's Macy. not Mackenzie. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> I had a blubber. If we can get Mackenzie <laughs> to come back to social media, we'll definitely have to try to get her and uh, Garrett on the show at one point. That would be great. But I mean, I'm sorry, Macy. I'm sorry. But um, it's just it's just so beautiful, and they're so tall. That's one thing too. The sets you have to look up. Yes. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You can't, and you can't see any. You can't see everything on first walkthrough. It's impossible. It's impossible. Like there's so much detail in every little corner that I could even imagine when they moved. Like how many trucks of items they had. I was actually offered like a position to help move whenever we moved from Primal Scream. Oh, you to, were really to awakened, yeah. But I couldn't do it because I had work at another job. But I saw like all these moving trucks moving everything one day because I drove by there, and oh my god, there were so many. Like it's <laughs> so like, and it's everything. That's another thing too. That that's one. That's one thing about it too. I really like about Another World, too. Like the main haunt. I can't, you, you can't really give too much away about the main haunt, but <clears throat> it's everything that you would want. In a classic kind of haunted house, but yet it's different each year. Yeah, yes. I will say that because whenever I got the job with Netherworld this year, uh, because for those of y'all that don't know watching at home, I've been haunting for five years, I believe, something like that. Um, I started at a smaller haunt called Fear the Woods down here in Stockbridge, Georgia. And then they didn't open because of COVID. And I decided, well, I still want to haunt. And I was able to get in with Netherworld. And I'm not looking back. Um, I love Netherworld. I love my Nether Spawn family. Uh, they're just such a welcoming people. And this year for my orientation was the first time I had been in the new location. The last time I had been through Netherworld was back when they did Blood Night for the first show theme. I think that was back in like 2009, I believe. I am not sure about that. I know some years themes, but not that one. Yeah. Um, so on, my, on the walkthrough, just showing us the sets, when we did our walkthrough at Orientation, my mind was just blown. Because you walk through, even with the work lights on, you're oh. still looking around just like, how am I supposed to take all of this in? Oh, the first time that I saw it with the lights on of the new location, I was like, oh my god. Like, it is literally, it's so much, but it's so well done that it's it all makes sense, but yet it's so, I don't know how to put it. It's just visually appetizing. It's like a feast for the eyes. And I mean, that's the thing too, is it's also a sensory overload because as you're walking through Netherworld, the, the ground's terrain changes with you as you're going out of Weishberg into the cemetery. You're going from loose cobblestone to uh, like, yeah. turf, like grass turf. And then you got sand once you get over towards the arena. It's just insane. Yeah, that's one that thing that if... Detail. if that's one thing if anybody listening, if they've never been to Netherworld, you, there are floors that change and that, you know, you kind of have to like, it's like you're physically walking there in your environment. It's not like a plain floor, like you're just walking on a plain floor and stuff's placed on it. It actually feels like, you know, you're stepping on that squishy grass or that plank of wood that's very loose. And, it's, and it adds to the environment so much to where it actually feels like you're actually there in the story or you're actually there in this environment or wherever you are, graveyard, you know. It's just, I don't know. And, and the fact that they add so many of it, like there's some that shake, some that rock, some that, you know, are squishy, you know, and it's like, oh my God, like, and this, this, the sensory overload topic that you went on, Cam, oh, that's just the animatronics. Oh, yes. That's just what, the animatronics. What? Once you encounter the good boy known as Mega Mega, then it's a whole different story. No, you know, the main Mega for me is was in Cold Blooded there. If anybody listening, this was like one of my personally my favorite 
like one of my favorite scenes in Cold Blooded. It was basically you got off like an elevator, <laughs> and Jake knows exactly what I'm talking about because it was like amazing to watch. We would we would just watch. We'll get react react to this, and you went up to this like kind of like video introduction, and you stood there for like minus two seconds and then all of a sudden this ginormous it looked like a mutated tyrannosaurus rex that would charge people with the mouth wide open and it was so amazing and people were falling on the floor running i mean it was beautiful it was i believe was, that was that was where the big daddy was in cyborg this year wasn't it yes sir you are correct about that Okay, and going back to what Jake was saying about the about this dude just going ham in the second show, so oh, they God. had me they had me on chainsaw a lot this year in second show. I believe I counted they at least had me on at least five times. I want to say, which with Netherworld because you're never truly locked to just one position. You can be literally in the second show one night and then the next night you're all the way at the beginning of first show at red lasers your position can always change at the drop of a hat until it's time to go into show mm -hmm. and, and they even had then me, it can still change oh yeah and they had me on chainsaw and the only way that i could go on break whenever it was my time to go on a break once my league got to me <laughs> was, was passing to me. go yeah, it was to go through outer <laughs> hallway where Dylan's spot was in Alien Autopsy, which I've worked Alien Autopsy a couple times as the Metabot, and I know Cover, covering me. Spot. And what what did they before you go on? What did they tell you when you first covered me? They didn't really say much other than just have fun. <laughs> they were like, "Have fun. It's a big area." Yeah, and for those of y'all, like, let me give you all a little visual representation of what this is like. So with Alien Autopsy, you have the entire outer hallway of Netherworld right there. You don't have any tight walls on you. You have an entire hallway you can just run rampant through, going door to door, just boom, 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 as fast and as hard as you can. Because you have the one corner curtain in Biolab. You have the curtain that goes into that grinder room. Then you have the slider door. Then you come around into Alien Autopsy, then run down. You got the, the next slider door at Spinner Floor. I had at least six boo holes to work with when I was working in Cyborg Shock as Dr. Sedok. I, I had at least, yeah, at least that. And I had that entire hallway that connected to room to room. So, I mean, oh, God. Yeah, because I, 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 remember, I remember watching you a couple times because you remember – Sometimes I would come down to the big fan right there just try to catch a breath if we were a little slow one night. Mm -hmm. Which, no, in other words, what is slow? But, yeah, exactly. Um, like, I would come down there just try to cool off and catch my breath. Because for those of y'all that don't know, I was in a gigantic set of EVA foam cyborg armor. And Dylan and Jake and Macy, y'all have seen how this stuff was. Y'all watched me get into this stuff every night. That stuff is no joke. Because you're covered literally from head to shin in EVA armor. You're also kind of restricted. Yes, very. You're very restricted in that armor because it's beautiful. But when you're trying to squeeze through those curtains, the shoulder pauldrons like to get caught on that on the rubber curtains. Mm -hmm. Cool off for a second. And I would see Dylan just going... Well, boom, come in five seconds later, come out. Well, boom, just the next orders, boom, 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 as fast as he can. And I'm sitting there watching him. And keep in mind, he has a half mask from Immortal, a full head silicone mask to his neck, as Dr. Sadak. And literally, I'm sitting there watching him just like, how is this dude not gassed out? <laughs> literally, my first, my first thought. My first thought about you, because I'm very big on you need to go hard, but you know you need to know how to pace yourself correctly. And I'm sitting there watching how you do it, and I'm just like, how is this guy not blown up? Honestly, I just swear that Dylan never runs out of energy. <laughs> I've, I've never seen him not act like he's hopped up on drugs. <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong. I mean, let's be honest here. <laughs> I mean, he is, a he is a doctor. He writes his own prescriptions. 
Oh yeah, oh, I mean, and I mean, and experimenting on myself, which is where Dr. Gregory came in. I mean, <laughs> Dr. I mean, I don't know where I got so much energy from. I mean, honestly, I'm not really sure. But you want to share I, some of it? <laughs> oh, definitely. We're da- oh, especially since it's the 20th anniversary. I'm sharing with all of you. But um, oh, thank you. I don't know. Like, I guess I just. Well, here's my thing. My style of haunting is I act like I'm in a horror movie. I'm the horror movie villain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to I, I wanna give off that persona. And you see how I attack, or I shouldn't say attack. I should say, I don't know, I guess interact with customers. Because even though I'm in my mind, my character attacks patrons. Um, your victims. We'll call them your victims. Definitely victims. <laughs> especially some of them. Yes, yes. You. <laughs> um I don't know. It's like I imagine in, in the horror movie, like you know, in the trailers, when the monster it like comes at the camera and the camera goes black. Yeah. So have you have you noticed, Macy? That's how I come out. Yes, because I was thinking about it like after it happened, because obviously I was more concerned about the fact that I was terrified. Um, I thought about after the fact, but when me and Ava went through. It felt like almost every time you you came out through one of those doors, it almost felt like a video game or a movie scene. We're like, oh, crap, we're running from the boss. Oh, God, here he is again. I, I, I thought we got away. How, where did you even come from? <laughs> like, that that's how it feels every time you pop out of one of the doors or curtains or whatever is there. And that, that was basically that. my goal. And, and that, that's the other thing is the way, oh. the, the way that Netherworld likes to plot things out they know how to draw your attentions exactly to where they want you to put your attention to. They know how to put your eyes to one place without them, without you even knowing they're trying to do that. So that actor, when they come in and hit you, it hits you twice as hard because you didn't see them come. And that's the, that's the beautiful thing is that the way that Netherworld sets it up, it sets it up so that scare is twice as hard because you don't see it coming until they're right in your face. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cameron, you, you, you couldn't have said anything better. I mean, honestly, and I mean, and Jake, didn't you go through one time? It wasn't during cold blooded out and it wasn't during cyborg. Didn't you go through one time during the awakening subject unknown? Yeah, I did. Because I remember what, what was I that night that you went through? It was something, and I followed you. I think you were your alien doctor character. It wasn't one of your main ones. It was like one of the doctors in process. I'll say that. But yeah, uh, it, it you, was. I think it was the autopsy doctor because I followed yeah. you to spin you, floor. You, I think you followed me from the giant alien corpse. Yep. like initially you followed me from the giant alien corpse and then i kept going through and you found me in the room where they would play the music from doom yep there yeah. we go yeah yeah and i remember you came at me in the window and i was and that was actually you were actually probably like one of the only people to get me all night because you came at me from the window so hard and i'm like oh shit and i'm very I, i'm pretty sure all of you have noticed like if you watch me behind a curtain I look like I'm an animal about to pounce. And I don't know why I do that. I just do that. Instinct. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> I've seen that. Because mm-hmm. I remember like, I've seen, I was watching you stand right there. This was after that customer that snapped your syringe, which we won't get into that because I don't want to get a rant started. But um, I remember because this is after you had just came back from the armory and you got a set of clacker gloves. Mm-hmm. And I remember I saw I saw you sitting there with the clacker gloves like this the whole time behind the curtain, just clicking them together, waiting. And once you saw it, I saw you just snatch that curtain and run as hard as you could. I was like, "Oh boy, look at look look at my precious Robo Dad go! Look at him go!" Yes, Honestly, yes. he is mean, Robo Daddy. And I mean, even that worked in the story because I was the only. I mean, let's be honest here: the entire cast of cyborg shock i was the only like doctor in there left who was still alive yeah everyone everyone else was either a cyborg creation of some sort or an experiment that was let loose in the lab you were the cause of all this i mean i'm the i made a lot and let's be honest here oh they were beautiful 
They were <laughs> they were your gorgeous I mean, subjects. <laughs> bloodthirsty robots who couldn't ask for anything, anything better. I mean, who couldn't ask for better children? But I mean, <laughs> and even some of them, like in Cold Blooded, one of the things I did was, uh, and I did this. I did this with you, Jake. Remember when you went to Robot Q? Because everyone, everyone from first show would be like, you know, you don't know your spot or know what to do in your spot. They'd be like, fine, Dylan. <laughs> Remember that, Jake, when Haz was like, fine, yeah, Dylan. Yeah. Dylan will tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, because I remember I had never been in Robot Cube before. I'd been a doctor before, but I was never in Robot Cube, and so they were. And so, like you were like, "Oh yeah, just go crazy. You can go here and here and here. You can even hop out to the queue if you want to do whatever." And I'm just like, "Hell yeah!" And yeah, you I gave you. I, I love explain everything to me. I loved giving you the tools, and I even told you like how you can creep around corners in certain ways to where they won't see you until like you do a certain thing or something like that. And I ended up trying a lot of your tricks and a lot of them worked really well. And I used some of your tricks on when the legendary haunt tour came through. Oh, that was amazing. I was so yeah. happy. That was, I'm so happy. That was that year. Yeah. Cause let's that be honest was, here. Yeah. Cause that was the year that, that, that night that the legendary haunt tour came through was one of the nights I was in robot queue and I was just, I was having a blast with everybody. And so on the topic of legendary haunt tour, just real quick, for anyone that's not into the haunt scene that's listening at home, um, Legendary Haunt Tour is where some, there are some of the biggest named haunts in the country. They get put onto a list that different haunters from around the entire country, and I do believe some of them across the world, really. I'm not exactly sure about that, but they all come and they tour those haunts throughout that entire list during, like, I believe it's like what a two or three weekend tour or something like that. Something it's, about three, it's probably a three weekend tour, I believe. Something yeah. like that. And, and Netherworld had never been on there before. And so everybody was begging for them to get Netherworld on there. And they finally did. <laughs> Let me and, tell you what, that was like one of the greatest nights of haunting because that was like haunters from like around the world. And it was so, and Jake, we were all at that entire, remember there was like the, the whole, both shows were fully stocked. Yeah, bo both shows. That was like one of the best nights I've ever seen Netherworld because. Night of the were, Gorgon and Cold Blooded were ham. Yeah, we all went off our rockers insane. Because <laughs> I do believe off they also threw insane. all, they threw in a lot of the icon characters into the show as well. They yes, they did. The I remember. I remember that. Yes, they did. They included a lot of icon characters, which we're not going to get into the icon characters because of what's, you know, everything else. But oh my god, it's just. Oh, it like, was in case y'all can't tell in his voice, he's nice. trying his best to keep quiet because he wants to say it. It was well, such I mean, a gorgeous, I, gorgeous evening. It was such. It was so good, and it was. I, I, I'm sorry. In my <laughs> opinion, the year to be so far. Of like a normal season. Don't get me wrong. Halloween Nightmares and, Co and Cyborg Shock were was a really good season and really good shows. But as far as like show amazingness wise, and like to the point where it was like, oh my god, neither Gorgon and Cold Blooded take the cake for me so far. Yeah, I have to agree with that. That was the year where I feel like everybody shined the most. Night of the was Night of the Gorgon and Cold Blooded that. Those are the shows to beat this year. Like, and I'm I, I'm very confident actually that 25th anniversary shows will be able to, you know, pro probably honestly probably surpass it because let's be honest here, it's the 25th anniversary, 25 years of Another World. But I just, cannot uh, wait to see what they have. Who God, you who? And it, if if y'all try to badger us in the comments about trying to get information, I'm sorry, we can't give it to you because we actually don't know much. They're keeping it. They're keeping a lot of it even quiet from us right now. We don't well, I mean, even. We haven't even seen what they've done so far. You know what I compare it to? You know how like the cast on American Horror Story like gets bits and pieces of the script, but yet they you know still fall into their characters and play the characters beautifully. Yeah. 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 That's how I feel like Netherworld is, but yet it's so it's I love it when they do that because it's like, you know, it keeps it interesting. I don't know, it just oh, yeah. keeps it interesting. Oh yeah. 
So coming off of that, we're going to get a little bit more in depth about questions wise. Um, before Ooh, I get questions. into it, before I get into it, Jake, Macy, do y'all want to start off the questions? Um, I think do I'm going to let you start off the questions because mine are going to involve lots more stories. <laughs> Ooh, okay. yeah. Macy, you got questions. anything? Give me the uh, questions. <clears throat> My questions, honestly, have to do more so with Dylan's older characters that we haven't gotten to talk much about, because everyone really knows uh, Dr. Sadek or Dr. Gregory, but we've only heard, like, bits and pieces about the other ones, and I want to know more about the other ones, in all honesty. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, then. I'll go on and get our main questionnaire out of the way, and then we'll go on and open the floor up. How about that? Um, all right. So... When it comes to your character psychology, now, now I warned you that we we're getting into the psycho- the psychological side of things. Ooh, so, spicy, yay. Eh? Oh, yes. Um, I, I always ask my guests, my guests this because I always like to see what it is that makes haunters tick, what makes each individual haunter different in the way they approach stuff. So when it comes to playing your different characters, what is your psychology to bring those other layers that you need to tell the character's story more in depth, just off of the couple seconds that those customers see you for, what is your psychology behind those characters to bring those layers in to really just bring that character to life? Well, honestly, um, actually during the year of subject unknown at the end of it, I started being like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start looking up tools that I can actually like, I'm going to say used to my advantage. And I started looking up different things of psychology from an old psychology website. And wow, there was a lot of information on lunatics. Like, wow. So, and I also wanted to base characters, psychology off of other characters that other people I know may like, which actually, um, Dr. Sedok, a lot of people don't know this, but um, my brother, uh, Kyle Evan Gregory passed away this day uh, last year in June, and I actually based him off of my brother a little bit, and based him off of kind of like what my brother was into horror wise, because my brother was, I mean, definitely like one of he loved horror movies. I mean, everything like that. So I was like, I want to, I want to pay tribute to him with this, but also keep it in my own way, and with the psychology of him and even with other characters i started looking into like how, like how does set us like how, how does being sadistic look how does being very contorted look how does that look when you're like you know very shaky with your fingers and you're very like clunking your fingers i'm cameron sees what i'm doing he knows exactly oh, yeah. what I'm talking about so yeah it's very you have to think like and i would always think Two, I would always write down something in my phone or something like that. How does this character move? How does this character interact? Like, well, why does this character act like the way they do? Because in, you know, our casting director will say this all the time. You can't just kind of go out there and say, boo. You know, and I always no, thought about no, that. No, 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 yeah, no. You don't, yeah, yeah, you don't do that. Boo but, is a bad word. Yeah, if you say bad, boo, you a, are a boo. Yeah, boo is a bad word in the haunted <laughs> industry. But, you know, it was like, how do I make these characters interesting? But also, how do I keep them creepy, scary, entertaining? And that all comes down to how they think. Because you all, you've all seen me. When I get in character, I stay in character unless there's a, either emergency or I need to get out of character or drink some water. Yeah, the only time that you, the only time I've ever seen you come out of character is when you're up in the, in the break room on break. That's the only time I've ever seen you out of character. And for me, the reason I stay in character that like that is because it gives such much more of a better performance. It truly does. Yeah. It it helps me stay in character. It helps me deliver better scares. I mean, you see me even behind the curtain. I'm doing stuff that my character would do walking around in the show. Like, just because yeah. I'm, I'm either A, passing time, or B, getting ready for the next group and figuring out how I'm going to scare them. It's just, I think psychology is very important when it comes to haunt characters. And I think it's very, I don't know, I think it's just very complex, but yet not at the same time. Yeah. 
And that's actually, now that I'm listening to how your psychology is, I'm realizing me and you actually share the same character psychology. I go into a character, like, how would this character move? How would he speak? What is his mannerisms? What makes him tick? And I start thinking about all that. So I realize me and you share the same psychology when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. And there, that's the thing. And with a lot of haunts out there, and there are a lot of amazing, great haunts, just as there's amazing, great actors out there. Absolutely. I feel like that's one thing that's missing with a lot of these original characters that these people create is they're just like, oh, well, it just, it looks scary. So I'm just going to be scary. It's like, okay, how are you going to do that? Because whether it's theater, whether it's haunts, whether it's wrestling, whether it's anything like that, you're portraying some form of story with what you're doing with your body. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to tell that story more in depth because would you really want to go see, you know, the Avengers, for example, would you really want to see the Avengers if you didn't really see why Tony Stark had to have the arc reactor put in his chest? <laughs> would you really just would you really just want to see the you know Captain America if he was just like oh well, ah, just, don't I'm, say the names I'm a, we're gonna get sued by Mickey Mouse? Does it look like ah, I can? Ah, Mi- ah, Mi- ah. Mi- Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse can go suck a fat one, okay? So, <laughs> there goes our Disney sense. sponsorship. Would it, make sense to see the big, would it make sense to see the big Dorito man and a big glowy boy? Oh my god. <laughs> but I mean, you get what I'm saying. It's like, why, would you really pay to go see Captain America if you didn't really know much about him and he's just like, oh, well, I, I'm a dude in blue and red and white spandex that, that's throwing a metal shield at people's heads and <laughs> really killing them for no reason? Or Would you really want to see Batman? Another example. Would you really want to see Batman if it's just like, oh, well, he's just beating up people for petty crimes for no reason. Mm-hmm. And see, now, this does, this this kind of does lay into your question, Macy, a little bit. I know kind of like what your question was kind of going to be, like, about my first show characters, which we will get into that. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like I do the same thing for them because they're, they're physical characters. And they have to be in that physical environment. Which, um, which actually, for, which actually, characters do you want to hear more about? Because there are a few. Honestly, I don't even know all of them. But the well, one I that can, I'm I can give you a list in... of my best oh, ones. My, my <laughs> best, my best first show characters was the clown doll in the attic in Night of the Gorgon, which Jake knows him. His name is uh, Jack. <laughs> Jack is very, let's just say, in the box. Not like in the box slowly, but in the box of his own mind. Um, oh boy! In the attic is a surprisingly, big, he was one of your more anyway. calm characters, wasn't he? He was one of the more calm ones, but he was also one of the most terrifying ones. If I have that's to say, the, that's the point. Um, there's him. There is the hag, which the hag is a very grotesque looking woman. I will say she's quite um, grotesque. I think I only know the hag because of the one picture you showed me of the silicone body piece. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I've never actually seen a photo of it. Oh, after this, I will definitely send you that photo, Cam. Oh, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, There's the dentist, and then I would have to say my other best character that I ever did in the first show was probably them it was probably the dentist the hag um and dorn definitely dorn too i cannot forget about dorn this year for halloween nightmares oh my god that was absolutely crazy he was well he was so much fun to play and i felt so powerful playing him but i don't know i mean which one do you want to know about because i can definitely go into it honestly so far i'm the most curious about the hag and now dorn (laughs) Well, the hag, she, I developed for her that she was kind of like an apparition and that she was kind of like for everyone listening at home. She was in a scene called the basement of like, say like a house. And I figured that she was haunting that basement. 
And anyone who came into that basement, like, you know, she does not like, she wants them to get out. So she screams at them and wants them to get out. And that's basically what I did with her. I made her scream a lot. I made her kind of like hiss and, you know, kind of like a banshee, but not. So, Mm -hmm. so she was more along the lines of like, she was definitely like classic horror. Yeah, like she was based on character. Yeah, she was definitely based off of the classic. She was kind of like the, the classic ghost, like that she faded. I made sure, like, she kind of like moved quickly, and I made sure her arm movements were very kind of like, if you know, I can't really show it for people listening, but kind of like that ghostly arm movement. And when she faded away behind a curtain, you know, when I popped out behind this curtain, I come out and I would be spinning, like how a ghost spins. And. I had very less leather layers of clothing on that were like tassels. So the tassel flowed whenever I would move and it looked very ghostly as well. And, oh God, I would come out to people and they were screaming. And Dorn, which, oh my God, I'm so happy I got to play him, was absolutely crazy. Uh, Dorn was in a scene called Alchemist Lab and Dorn was, he would lean over guests like that creepy lean over and i had these creepy finger gloves that would extend my fingers probably like at least like three inches i think honestly and you all know me and my crazy finger movements and my arm movements i was even i creeped out myself a little bit i was like all right i need to step back a little bit because it was the point where you know people were screaming and had one girl i remember crawl on the floor to get by me she just crawled under me literally because i just wingled my way over I mean, it's there's so oh my god, like Doran was so much fun. And I had a full silicone head with him too. I had that it down my neck. Um, yeah, you had uh, the mask that you wore for Sadok. Yes, I did. And I've worn a lot of silicone masks. I mean, my autopsy doctor was a silicone. Um, let's see here. The dentist was a silicone. I've definitely worn some silicone masks. Uh, I actually prefer them over latex masks. Me personally, when I actually have short hair, don't don't do a uh, silicone mask when you have long hair. Just trust don't me. Do it. It, it, don't, don't do it. it. Don't it's, do it. Don't do it. It's for, terrible for people, listen, for people listening at home. You want to get hair removal? <clears throat> great way to do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially at the end of the night when you're sweaty. But it's like it's gonna it's gonna pull off the first layer. It's gonna it's just, it's just gone. Yeah, it's just gone. It's just oh, it's just I don't know. It's just uh, it's just so crazy. Honestly, like. My characters are so in depth, but they're not at the same time. Like I can pull them all out like a toy box, and it's so weird that I can say that. A little toy box inside your mind. A little toy box of horrors, honestly. <laughs> it's all these little haunted dolls, and you have to pick out which one you want to play with that night. And it's oh, it's it's just it's it's like a library too. Do you, almost. Do you, do you have a question <clears throat> for me, Jay? I would love to hear your question because you're well, the one instead of involved stories, and I oh, I mean, ooh. <laughs> so you, you didn't work at any other haunts before Netherworld, right? Correct. Okay, so. Being a uh, being a Florida boy, being a Florida boy, you said you went to Halloween Horror Nights every year and whatnot. I would like to know what was one of your crazier experiences at Halloween Horror Nights when you were young. What were some of your Which, favorite might I say, themed? I'm, yeah, I'm jealous that you've been to HHM because I've been wanting to go for years, but I've never Same. been able to get down there. I'm just I'm not gonna lie it was the, the 25th anniversary year for Holland Horror Nights was the best ever I'm not I'm just gonna put that out there hands down sorry smack dab in the middle but um my craziest thing at Halloween Horror Nights there was a house that was called Dead End and there's actually two stories I'm gonna say with this and I don't know if you have another I don't know if you have another question after this Jake but so there was a scene in there that it looked like a woman fell down a pair of stairs or something and she looked like she cracked her neck great scene terrifying but i remember it coming at me and i remember for the first time ever me actually sliding and falling on the floor like and i remember sitting there like why did i just do this like there's no reason for me to do this i know it's not real why did i just slide and scream like can, can 
like there was that and then one night actually um i was in a house i'm pretty sure that was called um La Le- i don't know how to say it la leonia la there we go jake thank you <laughs> and there was a part where it was like a woman reached out and she accidentally grabbed my hat and grabbed it from me and like I think she realized, like, mid-grab, it was a beanie. And then it fell into, like, a coffin where there was, like, a dead corpse was in it. And I just see my beanie laying on this dead dude's heart. And I'm like, okay. And I just grabbed it. And all of a sudden, the thing starts spraying me. And I'm like, that's nice. So it, it, it's, it wants my hat. <laughs> you should have just left it and ran. I mean, I was kind of like, it was a beanie I've had for a while, and I was like, sorry, I'm not leaving it in this universe. <laughs> La Llorona will not have my beanie today, not the week. She will not. <laughs> she, can, she, she can have the children, but not my beanie, okay? She can have the children, but she cannot have this piece of knitted cloth that I have owned for years. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> Thank you. Come really again. Good. Have a great day. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Um, well... <laughs> um, hmm. let me think here Macy did you have anything you wanted to know uh, actually yeah a little bit so Cameron already discussed and you already kind of went into your scare psychology but something that I'm always interested in is how you come up with like backstories for your characters if that makes sense so, like obviously with netherworld themes you already do kind of get a little bit of a backstory but um, you can obviously personalize it to your characters. Mm-hmm. And I want to know if you have a certain process behind that or anything. I do. It is each each year whenever uh, the theme gets released, I design new characters around that. And sometimes I do it for both shows because I don't know what's going to make it in or not sometimes because, I mean, I don't, I don't know what I'll be or whatever. Mm-hmm. And for my character, it all starts, yes, with the, with the backstory. That's kind of like the foundation of my house, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And whatever I do will keep, kind of like mend that together with my story. Like for Dr. Suttok and the, uh, the obelisk that Cam mentioned earlier, it was a big part of the story. And when that blasted out an electromagnetic pulse, you know, Dr. Sadok was in his lab, just minding his own business, I figured. And when that set out, he fell to the floor dead. And that electronic pulse kind of like brought him back to life, started seeping into his mind, turning him crazy. And I figured that was kind of like his story. So that way it relates to his story, but yet it's his own for being yeah. what happened in the environment. I always base my character's stories off of what their environment is, because if there's like, let's just say a pumpkin man in a doll room, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know. Or, or a it, clown in a cannibal shack. See, now there you go. A clown in the a character, tag. There, that too. That, well, no, that was funny. But <laughs> that was funny. But I mean, I guess it just... They have to match their environment. That's the first thing I do. I, I look around in their environment. Like when I first started making the doctors, I was like, I, I started looking around the lab and I was like, what kind of insane individual would live here, would work here, would want to work here, would want to start making these creatures, would want to experiment on these creatures? The environment, I would say, is my answer to that question because the environment helps so much with it because. You can't just put a random character anywhere, especially in haunted houses. Yeah, not even just nether, not even not even just netherworld. You know, haunted houses. The characters have to make sense where they're going. But kind of leading in here, I mean, but think about it for a second. How in that shit crazy would it be if Doctor Gregory invaded Brother Jack's museum, or Brother Jack showed up at the box? Oh, or, I want no. I want I want Doctor Gregory and Brother Jack to be in the queue line together. Are you kidding me? Are you, we would have so <laughs> much fun. Like we would have conversations that, about like just stories of just monsters and creatures, and people would just watch us and disturb me. Ben Armstrong, make it happen. 
<laughs> TikTok, TikTok. That's what the people want. <laughs> yes, the or, ima- people or want imagine Doctor Gregory. <laughs> or imagine Dorn. Want Dr. Gregory. And I mean, I mean, Doctor Gregory. Doctor Gregory was in the Q line, though. Doctor Gregory was a Q line character because of Robot Q. Yeah, he was. But imagine him and Brother Jack together in like the column Q or something, along with Gustav. <laughs> oh, Gustav! Oh my God! Which shout out to David Gregory? Yeah, shout out to David Gregory. I hear all, hey, all, all I'm saying is forget about Doge Coin. We we need Sada Coin. Not to the moon, to the obelisk. Oh my god! <laughs> but um... we... actually, so hold on. I actually have a question for all of you. Okay. Oh wow, it's getting turned around. Yes, it is. Twist, twist. Oh, the turntables. There, that's me. So, <laughs> if you had to see any of my doctor characters in his own movie horror movie which one would it be and you can only choose one to make it interesting just because i'm a sucker for a good robot when it comes to horrors i would say sadduck i knew you were gonna say that cam but honestly i forgive you and i appreciate it uh for me it would have to be dr gregory because i'm a huge i'm a huge fan of like a the, the alien movies and um just things like life and whatnot so i would want to see I would want to see um, Dr. Gregory experiment with his reptiles and have everything go wrong in a horror movie. I feel like I have to say Sadik just because it's the only character I've seen you play as I've only had one year at Netherworld. However, deep down, I don't know why I would like to see something with Dorn just because it strays a little bit away from the whole medical thing a little bit <laughs> you know <laughs> what no. Doran would be awesome oh, to play yeah. in a movie I will say which one would you pick oh if I had to pick any it would be Dr. Gregory hands down I knew it <laughs> I mean, how I played him and how I would make it look like I was experimenting on all these repti- reptiles and dinosaurs even the big animatronic dinosaurs like I would make it look like I'm taking like a serum from them and it would, oh, yeah. I would make it look real. Oh, yeah. I mean, and like, in my opinion, like, as of right now, like, Dr. Gregory is your magnum opus, in my opinion. I think I wish, he was. I wish Cameron and Macy could have been there the year prior to see him because it was amazing. It was <laughs> truly fantastic. Oh, I mean, thank you for saying that, Jake. It was, I mean,. <clears throat> It was truly fantastic. Me, but it, was- it was truly fantastic to see what what you did and how you went ham like that all night is beyond me. Because, I mean, you know, I don't fall out, but <laughs> yeah, um, that that one that one Saturday before Halloween that was like I don't know how long. Like, a, I think we went to like what three in the morning that one time, like three thirty. It was it was my first year there, and I was in. I was in a uh, primal scream as this like character. I had the football pads with the big spikes on them and everything. Yep. I know and exactly was, what we're talking about. Yeah. And it was like three 30 in the morning and I fell out because I was about to vomit. I mean, yeah, honestly, I mean, Oh gosh, that's one thing too, listeners. If you never haunted before, like it, sometimes it gets long. And I mean, I don't mind it ever. But oh wow! Like sometimes, like one time, I looked at my phone one night, and it, I know it was during 2018, and I was like, Do "These people have jobs in the morning." Like, <laughs> like we're scared. I mean, I don't mind it, but I'm like, "Wow, we're scaring people at like 3:30 in the morning." Oh wow! I mean, I um, one year my nephew and my niece and my nephew's girlfriend, they all came through to see me and they were in line for almost five hours. I mean, that's how long the line was. So I'm, oh, I would have left. <laughs> dude, they, they just waited. They just waited. Everybody just waits. That's like how much people want to see Netherworld. That's yeah, how much they want to see it. That's, and, that, and I can tell you like how crazy Netherworld is. Like if somebody's willing to wait in a five hour line to see a show, who I mean, it, that's like going to see Rob Zombie. I mean, it's oof. gonna be a damn good show. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. I mean, oh. it's a story. Oh yeah, definitely.
And we're back. Now it's time for the stories of the box, hosted by Dylan Gregory and Cameron hey. Pierce. Mm-hmm. Hey, welcome hey. to the show. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, as you heard Jake say, he's kind of stepping off of this one because he's never really been in the second show except for a very ham- small handful of times. Um, so, the lore of the box. So, Dylan, would you like to explain exactly what the box facility is? Well, the box facility is basically a top secret laboratory and advanced weaponry design facility that was military. And it had different sections of the lab, kind of like how a place would have different sections. And each section was different, but yet each section was very I'm going to say had their own monsters and creatures in it that they were studying. So there was blue section, which was aliens. There was gray section, which was cybernetics and robotics and advanced weaponry design, which we all know what that, what happened with that place. Um, There was green section, which was paleo cloning, which was the dinosaurs, which is what Dr. Gregory was a part of. There is orange section, which is like cryptid containment, which I'm going to say is kind of like <laughs> kind of like the zoo of the box, if I'm going to say anything about that. And but it's the closest section that I think would easily re- replicate SCP containment breach. Yeah, exactly. As like a, a containment breach. Because it deals with more of the paranormal and supernatural anomalous activity mm-hmm. that you would find in the world. Mm-hmm. And the story went for the first year for the box was that they were doing an autopsy on an alien just to study it, nothing out of the ordinary. And that alien corpse ended up having a virus in it that was rapidly mutating and, and infected all the workers. I shouldn't say all, most of the workers. And a lot of the scientists and workers went crazy with boils. That's what one of Jake's characters had. And, you know, that virus was very powerful. But then in the second year, the box cleaned it everything up. They contained everything. And since, you know, they had now this virus to make anything they could really use it for, they got the order from the green section and also the council, which oversaw the box, to start making these, I'm going to say, reptilian soldiers that could win on any battlefield. And obviously that experiment kind of went array with that you saw in the intro with one of my doctor characters having various reptilian skin on him and that went into the security systems of the box facility going into a lapse and it running into cyborg shock which was a artifact stored in this facility from orange section blasted out this powerful pulse and it seized control of gray section which was robotics and that is where Cameron's medbot came from. My doctor set came from. And they start making this nightmarish assembly line of cyborgs. And I will say that they were quite nightmarish. A couple of them cyborgs were real nasty. Yes. So. I would say in particular, I would probably say just because of how brutal it looks. I would say Garrett's cyborg character and Mackenzie's cyborg characters would be more of the more brutal type because you could tell that's like flesh and skin meshed together, as well as Jennifer Meekins. Yeah, cyborg. her. Yeah, all of theirs were definitely crazy. And for me, animatronic wise, it was that one cyborg that was like mended with flesh on the wall. That one was gross. I don't know if you. Saw, I, don't, I don't know if you. I have. I. I didn't see it on my first go through on that. There's a cyborg by the crushing claw that looks like he's just attached to the wall, and it's kind of gross because he comes out and it looks like skins on him. So he was quite nasty in my opinion, but I loved it anyway. But like the box I was mean, that over I, towards your area of the box? Yes, it, yes, it was. It was right after Bottomless Pit. Oh, wait, you're talking about, is it the big mesh of everything together right there in Biolab? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah, he was quite gross. Gentlemen, I have a question. 
Yes. Ooh. Can you tell me about the first citizen? Ooh, the first citizen. The first citizen was a very powerful entity in the box facility. He was basically, you kind of saw him on screens. And I don't know if anybody here is ever, I don't know if anybody listening has ever seen the iRobot. Do you know Vicky? Vicky. No. <laughs> what, what's, it, what's a way? It's what's an artificial intelligence. Okay. Okay. It was kind of like an artificial intelligence <laughs> situation that this artificial intelligence would help the box facility. Okay. And oof, that, that first citizen was saying all kinds of stuff during cold blooded. He was not happy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> all right then. Um okay. Well, that was my question. Back to story time. Yeah. And I will say this with the gray section, we have a lot of the more crazily huge animatronics because we have two of our gigantic tight our giant titan robots uh the overseer and then the one that's right there next to the missiles Mm -hmm. just as you came out of pusher um we have a lot more of the larger cyborgs in the gray section the one i'll Um, tell you what though the one year that was really crazy with creature wise was cold-blooded there were some really nasty dinosaurs and dinosaur mutants in that this lab really needed to be shut down let me tell you now oh my god like if the fda ever found out what was going on down there who boy because like osha would have a stroke oh yes he would Osha would have a stroke, die, then come back to life due to Dr. Gregory in some way. And most, then most likely, have a stroke yes. again. <laughs> but I mean, the freaking, the, the T-Rex that I mentioned earlier, you know, the serpent from the sewer, the mutated battle warriors, you know, the lizard men. Like, Don't even get on. me started on the serpent from the sewer because he was right there at the end of Bottomless Pit this year. Mm-hmm. You know the serpent. The serpent's quite lovely. Because I remember every single time someone would go over Bottomless Pit, all I would hear is roar. Every yeah, that's serpent. single time. Yeah, I mean, even during Cold Blood, he wasn't much of a people. He wasn't much of a people person. He just liked to eat them. Yeah, and the the box is a very fun place to visit. Obviously, if you can ever book a tour to the box, you should definitely book a tour. You're most likely going to lose an arm and a limb, but you know he'll survive. I mean, there's plenty of well, doctors. I mean, there. Look, modern modern day Gen Z already wants to die anyway. Why not do it in style and just visit the box? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, not, I mean, not to mention there's plenty of doctors there, including Doctor Gregory, who can give you a reptilian arm, or Doctor Sadok, who can give you a cybernetic arm. Your choice. <laughs> you can literally be the Winter Soldier in real life, just a lot more mangled up. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie like i'm not gonna lie like even i wouldn't volunteer myself to be dr gregory's patient because i know i'm not getting out of that speaking of which we actually left a section out of our little story time of the box we left out the red section actually yeah you actually did i actually did leave a red section thank you the red section it's kind of like it kind of tied into green section for cold blooded because you need patience Red section basically provided the human test subjects for the box, in my opinion. Red section was pharmaceuticals and like blood work, and which is where a lot of the doctors came from, too. A lot of the nurses, too, which is oh my god, the nurses at the box facility. You think Silent Hill nurses are crazy? Wait until you see these women, you know, you don't want to get near them with a needle. So, I mean, oof, but. The red section was so cool because it was like clones, but it was like really crazy test subject clones that was like gross at the same time. And they were also being turned into reptilians. So that was also kind of crazy as well. And we can never forget a certain individual that is being held captive in the red section. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Oh, we can't, well, we can't mention him. We can't do that. No, we can't do that. I mean, we, we might have to, the, I mean, I'm, I, I'm ironically, he might be getting mangled up. Yeah. Mangled he, up. <laughs> yeah, he might be getting mangled up, but he'll survive. He will. I mean, he, I mean, he always, I mean, somehow he always, he'll, 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 he always worms his way into things. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we're just beating around the bush with this. 
They oh. need to let my boy go. He ain't do nothing wrong. <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, he, oh, oh, he did plenty wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So the, that's the thing, people. Is the reason that we went into kind of story time about the box is the second show has such a big in depth story to the point that it can get a little confusing to people. A and little bit. There's actually a lot of Nether Spawn. And Dylan, you can attest to this as well. There's a lot of Nether Spawn in our family that literally they have no clue what the other sections are. They have no clue what any of the sections are because it's such an in depth story. They actually get a little confused as to what it is. Although that is that is true, but that is true for both shows because both shows have so yes. much. I mean, although you can't blame them for a show of people because. First show is so in depth as well, and it has such an in show, it has such an in depth story. I mean, honestly, both of them have such in depth stories that you really have to do your research. And it's one of the it's the largest of the two shows. Yeah, yeah it's the largest of the two shows. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, I mean that's the thing is, this is the thing. The second show is more of our sci fi and gorier, more gritty story that we tell at another world and then the first show is more of your very if you go through the first show at another world the best thing you can think about is hp lovecraft exactly that, that is one of the biggest things that you need to keep your mind on when you're going through the first show at another world is hp lovecraft you will see a lot of different stuff from him and multiple other stuff that's involved that a lot of haunts actually do not think about when they're writing their mm-hmm. stories Although on the subject of the box, if you want to, if you want to share one story of the box that is really really funny. So one night when I was Doctor Sedok, I come out of this curtain and there is a woman there, and I scare her so bad to the point where oh, <coughs> oh, oh hello, excuse me, sorry about that, but it was to the point where she took off her hair, and I mean her fake hair. And Cameron, I'm pretty sure this was the night that you were chainsaw and she was swinging it at you. Yes. Mm-hmm. There was a woman who she took off her weave and she basically swung it at people. Mm-hmm. Swung it at me first. And that was probably the craziest reaction we ever had in the box facility. Yeah, but, and she she apparently then put it back on her head and then when she got to me at chainsaw, she ripped it off again and started hitting me with it. So now y'all people would just be doing too much. <laughs> like, it's just too much. That's what I'm saying. That, and, that's and what Ma- I'm saying. And Mama, if it's not a if it's not a Mugler suit or a Mugler wig, it's not worth the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um. All right. Well, but it- yeah, I mean that that's your general wrap up about the box facility, and it, it, it's an interesting place to be. It definitely is. You should definitely come check it out sometime at Another World. Definitely. You definitely come out if you're in the area or even if you're not in the area. Try to plan a road trip to come see us this year. It's the 25th anniversary of Another World. We're definitely yeah. going to blow it out of the water this year. I will tell you that right now. Yeah, you know what? I'm honestly going to leave it on this about Another World. Like I said earlier with Another World, always expect the unexpected and expect it to be ghoulishly different and ghoulishly beautiful all at the same time and we, we talked about the sets and all that yeah but just this- it's, it's, it's worth the trip honestly in my opinion if you're a haunt fanatic or if you love haunts like it's just it's just the way to go honestly like there's some i mean yeah there are really good haunts out there but this really is one that you should add to the list like I, even i have ones that i i have on my list to go to and I mean, oof, like, there's so many. And, you know, just Netherworld really is, like, one of the staples, in my opinion. It's kind of like, oh, you yes. know, it's kind of like the lunch, a really good lunch to a haunt fanatic, I want to say. Yeah, and a, ha- a couple of the haunts that's on my list is, like, Statesville <laughs> Haunted Prison up in Illinois, um, Midnight Terror in Illinois, um, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, where was the wanna, where, where is the one that one of your guests? I know that one of your guests that you had here, Courtney, I believe. 
She is with Arx Mortis over in Killen, Alabama. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, Corny, if you're listening, huge fan. Oh my god, but um, like, whoa, awesome. But uh, oh my god, like that haunts on my list. The darkness in St. Louis, Missouri, is definitely on there. I've always wanted to go oh, to Queen yes. Mary's Queen Mary's Harbor. Plus, whenever, whenever, like. COVID is like a thing in the past. Trans world is definitely on the list. Yes. And I, I do know they have started letting actors in and not just like haunt owners and management. They have actually started putting public tickets out where actors can buy tickets to go to the show. Yeah, we're doing that. That's that's yeah, a, eventually we're road tripping to St. Louis to do that. Oh yeah, like, eventually. Eventually. I want to get them. I want to get those trans world sales on a couple of those mass companies, and uh, we will be vlogging that if that ever happens. Oh yes, yes absolutely. And, I, and if I and, and people listening, if I if I can be there, I will be there. Oh, absolutely. We're all gonna have to make like a big road trip, get a couple of hotel rooms and everything. It's gonna be a big. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be fun. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, y'all can see right here, people. I mean. We, we've talked a lot about how Netherworld is, but now that you've gotten more people that work there than just me, Jake, and Macy, and that was it, now that you've gotten another one of our Spawn family, you see how in-depth Ben Armstrong likes to write his stories. And that's one thing is if, if you're watching this, Ben, we want you to get on this show at some point. We want to pick your brain on here at some point. <laughs> I don't even think there is a way to pick Ben's brain. Ben is just amazing in every single ben is way. Ben is Ben. Just plain and simple. Ben Armstrong is Ben Armstrong. But, yeah, I mean, definitely, people, y'all need to come check us out. Um, so I think that's going to just about do it. I agree. This episode. Um, once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sadik, also known as Dylan Gregory. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming on and hanging out with us and chatting with us for a bit. I know I've been promising you we were going to get you on for the longest time ever since we announced the launch of the podcast. I knew we were going to try to get you on eventually, and I promised you, and here it is. So, Dream come true, I guess you could say. Um, yes, it was definitely it was a lot of fun, you know, with work with filing my schedule, working out, and you know, shout out to Amber at Mellow Mushroom because I know she's going to listen to this, so shout out to her because oh, I love that woman, and also she's amazing, and also I mean, I wanted to end with that because I wanted to give her a shout out because I think she deserves it. <laughs> oh yes. Um, so if you got any social medias you want to plug or anything, you can go on and plug those right now. Uh, I have an Instagram. It is uh, underscore lunatics underscore playground on, on Instagram. That is where you can find me. And you can see all of my haunt characters and pictures of them in all of their costume and glory. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at killing underscore machine underscore Sarge. Um, you can also fo follow the uh, Demonic Discussions official Instagram at is I believe Jake, correct me if I'm wrong. It's demonic underscore discussions, correct? That that is correct. All right. And uh Jake, if you got any you'd like to plug, you can go on and plug that. Um my Instagram is the underscore monster underscore in the underscore closet. Very long. I, 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 I love it. I love it, Jake. The monster in the closet. <laughs> I mean, you've been following me forever. You've seen it before. And I mean, does my I mean, does my does my name not make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Oh, it does. But right. um, before before we end this episode off, we do need to announce our next guest on the next episode. So, our next guest on the next episode of the Demonic Discussions podcast is another one of our another Spawn family. He is my chainsaw brother from the second show. He is known as Warboy Von Fury, also known as Travis Hodson. Uh, he's a wastelander, haunter with us at Netherworld, and just an all overall awesome, awesome individual. Uh, so he will be on the next episode. Be on the lookout for that. And yeah, so if you enjoyed the episode, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn your post notifications on so you'll get notified when we upload um, any content. Um, 
And yeah, so for the Demonic Discussions podcast, I'm Cameron Pierce, joined by Jake Phillips and our guest, Dylan Gregory, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Hey, see ya.